we got a true Irish comedian here today guys this one is called Irish Latinos Somosos Pasanios by David Nihil okay and the description says there's a lot of connection between Latin and Irish culture this is very true guys I often joke that Irish people were the original Mexicans okay that's pretty funny now of course guys we all know about the Irish helping the Mexicans during the you know war with America and stuff like that when they're trying to take over Mexico the La, La uh, Patriciones uh, Battalianos like that St. Pa uh, St. Patrick's Battalion where they helped fight back the Americans so the Irish and the Mexicans and the Latin the Latina Latinos have an amazing heritage together so this one should be hilarious guys first time ever hearing of David Nihil but he's Irish so this is gonna be hilarious. The only other Irish comedians I've ever reacted to on this channel are Tommy Tiernan and Conan O'Brien, but he's more like more American Irish. So and we're talking about true born and raised Irish. So this one should be amazing. Drop a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on this one and let's go. I am indeed from Dublin, Ireland, but I, I live in America now, so I identify as Latino. <laughs> I had to start doing that to get through your automated customer service lines. Because the other options are no good, are they? Like, the minute you call up, they're like, thank you for calling. For English, press one. I was like, I don't want to be English. <laughs> <laughs> My people have been avoiding that option for <laughs> about 800 years now. <laughs> That's class. Uh, what else have you got? You just keep listening, it gets immediately better because they'll be like, para espanol, marca dos. I said, I'm in here, and now these are my new people. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's the beauty of this identify as whatever you feel like culture that we, <laughs> that we have at the moment. No one can even get mad about that, but I didn't want to shock my parents too much because they don't know they raised a Latino. Yeah, so it is at least logical. Irish people, Latinos, already emotionally connected. We both like drinking, dancing, fighting, mostly work in construction. <laughs> we are primarily Catholic. We love soccer, speak a whole other language, and have problems with immigration. We... All those things are very, very true. We are connected to every culture. Many Latinos here tonight. I see a few. Oh. Ooh, I am surrounded. Uh, vamos a hacer el show en español. Sería mil veces mejor. Sí, y dejar los gringos por afuera. Sí, I really committed to learning that language. I, I, I love it. I said, well, I'm in the second largest Spanish-speaking country in the world, and I wanted to commit to that language because I didn't want to get caught out by some Karen in Whole Foods one day. You know, they'll get you. She'll be like, oh my God, I saw your little skits online where you identify as a minority group that you are clearly not part of. And I'll be like, Karen, he went, puta que larga se hasta <laughs> <laughs> oh. Think he said something like, get your bitch ass out of here or so something. Puta's like, biatch. That's cool. Oh, that would be very enjoyable, wouldn't it? You just, you just see her scurrying off to the Tesla just to avoid a racial hate storm. And <laughs> There's nothing but a trail of confusion and goji berries behind her. <laughs> and Irish people first came to America and we were like, hello, help us starving refugees. America's like, all right, but you got to fight in our war against Mexico. We're like, well, that, that doesn't... Oh my God, no way is he going to reference this, guys. That's such a quick... Bro, there's no way he's going to reference that. So, this is called... La, uh, the video that I reacted to, like, last year, it's blowing up right now, guys. It's called La Petriciones Batalianos, something like that. And it's St. Patrick's Battalion, and they had to fight against the Mexicans when they first came here. But then they just swapped sides, guys, and they just fought for the for the Mexicans because they saw how unfairly they were being treated. You know, starving refugees. America's like, all right, but you got to fight in our war against Mexico. Well, yeah. well, that that doesn't sound like a great plan. Uh, have you got any other programs for the refugees? <laughs> Because America always has a program for something, but no, they didn't, and we ended up fighting against Mexicans, and we mm. were down there, and we're like, geez, we like these people, I don't know why we're fighting against them at all. <laughs> yeah. We have a lot. See this bit video, guys, uh, the San Patricionis Battalianos. Got like 15,000 views on that one, guys, and it's completely like blown up, man, because we love the Mexicans, guys. I don't know why we'd be fighting them, that's ridiculous. And we were down there, and we're like, geez, we like these people, I don't know why we're fighting against them at all. <laughs> We have a lot in common. They're great fun. And then we saw the deal breaker, Latinas. 
<laughs> We're changing science. <laughs> <laughs> this lad's crazy, bro. Yeah, we saw, we were conquered, and we came. <laughs> That's outrageous, bro. We did. We, we genuinely changed sides. We became the first country in European history to fight on behalf of Mexico. And that is the longest yet most historically accurate way to say we also shagged our way into Mexico. If you know your history, that group, they're called the San Patricios. There's a lot of cool things named after them to honor that connection between the two places. There's a guy called William Langford from Wexford. Most people know him as Zorro. Uh, you didn't know that Zorro was a sneaky Irish dude. The legend of Zorro based on a mildly illegal masked immigrant riding around doing nice things ahead of his time. And he was a skilled swordsman with a blatant disrespect for authority. Definitely Irish. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely, and we, we left a bit more modern evidence. Uh, you just go on Google Images and you type boxing, and then you add the word Canelo. <laughs> and just have a look what comes back at you, because... Yeah, Canelo looks ridiculously Irish. I'm pretty sure he is Irish. I don't know, he looks like more Irish than half the people here, and then they say that he's Mexican or something. It's wild. <laughs> and just have a look what comes back at you, because... You're gonna see a world and Mexican boxing champion that's suspiciously red-haired. Yeah. Pasty white skin, covered in freckles, and his real name is Barrigan, an Irish name. So if, so if someone could get that man a 23 and me result, we can claim another true champion. <laughs> yeah, we are, we are connected to those cultures. Do you know where they differ a little bit from Latin people to an Irish people? Latin people are not as sneaky as Irish people. Like, you don't even know. In Spanish, do you know the word for sneaky? Where are me Latinos at? Picaro. Picaro. They're not agreeing with that over here. I heard an audible no over here. No, oh, suspicious. Not really. It doesn't translate. Isn't this amazing? That's the diversity we have in Chicago these days where an Irish person is confusing Latinos with their own language. You know? <laughs> But it's a bit of a sneaky trivia one because there's loads of slang words, but there's no direct translation from English Spanish to the word sneaky. And it, yeah, sneaky. Yeah, that's like sly, almost like like not suspicious. It's like sly, um, uh, conniving, like cunning. Conniving would be an English word for that as well. Conniving, maybe. Yeah. It's fantastically ironic because if you're a Mexican and you're kind of known for sneaking over the border. <laughs> And there's no word for the thing that you're doing. I mean, are you just walking over an arbitrary line in the ground to, you know, visit your family or pick a few strawberries or maybe celebrate Cinco de Mayo, a festival created for you? And Americans are like, hey man, you snuck in there. You're like, listen, that's the past tense and a regular verb that I don't have. I'm just, I'm just gonna keep walking until someone buys me a flight to Marta's Vineyard. Because <laughs> like Mexican people normally work as like strawberry pickers in the U.S. and like California and stuff. Oh, that was sneaky. That's fire, guys. David Knight Nihil. We're gonna check out his channel a little bit more. He seems absolutely fire. Two hundred, three hundred thousand subscribers. Irish comedian in America. How have I only seen him right now, guys? A hundred million views on YouTube. Never even heard of this guy, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not sure when he emigrated, guys, but it must have been a while ago because if, and maybe he just started doing comedy in the US because I don't know, has he ever done comedy? Yeah, so he's only been on YouTube a year and his stuff is blown up already. That's unbelievable, guys. I have to react to more of his stuff. He has a full, that's just a segment from his full special that has 2 million views, but a lot of his stuff has a lot of different views, guys, so unbelievable to see that, guys. Um, like I said, 91 million, <clears throat> 91 million views. Unreal, guys. I have to react to more of his stuff for only 8 videos or so. Uh, he has a lot of shorts. I think shorts is where he gets most of his uh, views from. Let's have a check. Yep, I'm definitely cracking up. 13 million views for his shorts. So yeah, go check out his shorts as well, guys. His shorts are amazing. Those one-liners are amazing, guys. You know, controversial, funny, funny guy. 
I have to react to more of his stuff, guys. He's doing tours all over America. Hopefully, he comes to Ireland. It would be impressive to see that. Let me know your thoughts on him, guys. Drop a comment. Make sure to subscribe. We're about to hit 100K, and I'll see you guys all in the next one, man. Peace.